Jude mm-hmm. Law, you sneaky bastard. All right, Mark, well, you're back. You're Good back. Times. Hey, what's up? We got a new Jack Ryan. Yeah. We got a new Jack adventure. Ryan. Yeah, absolutely. What did you, what did you think about Clear and Present? <clears throat> um what i thought about while i was watching it was damn i didn't remember how long this was this is a it is long, long long movie dude were we making two hour and 20 minute like popcorn action thrillers back in 1994 apparently we were i forgot that completely the other thing i was thinking about was that uh like is this like the first type of movie that is this and what this is, I think, is like a like a populist kind of like espionage thriller, except it's not really espionage because Jack Ryan's not really a spy. Ah, yeah. <clears throat> this sort of like international affairs, sort of on this like blockbuster scale, right? Uh, government intrigue plus like soldiers and action. I'm like, is this like the first one of these? Because I know there's like Three Days of the Condor, there's like the spy who came in from the cold, but I'm like, is this the first one of these? I feel like in the Reagan era, it was more difficult to get away with like shaming the government, especially the executive branch. And I think with Clinton in office, it became less like pious. And and even like, even like a Ron Contra, you know, like the eighties, like. Yeah. So, I mean, because from my memory the 80s were very kind of jingoistic and temperament around like you know usa usa but um i i thought it was interesting like and this is just a stupid hit and run observation but shouldn't this movie be called patriot games and the other movie be called clear and present danger <laughs> i mean i'm totally down with that actually. i don't disagree i love when the president announces like almost to the camera he almost puts <clears throat> down the lens he's like these guys are a clear and present danger <laughs> yeah nobody plays a good uh like buffoon president like donald moffat this was when they like codified like the henry zerny character like that he would later <laughs> oh go on God. flight and mission impossible. i love that guy so much he's the best this is the like the first time you saw like joaquin de almedia who, who who went on basically to play the same type of heavy and like um fast five and desperado and stuff like that and this is a really nice this is a re- interesting third in the series because for one it's a really nice mix of tones with patriot games and hunt for Red october where like hunt for yeah. october is much more of a thriller with you know it's heavily plotted patriot games is much more i thought kind of lackadaisical in the plotting a little bit more just like a revenge story sort of personal jack ryan type drama this one i think mix the two i think the movie it's um it really takes off i think for me in like the second half the first half and maybe somewhat in the middle and the second early parts of the third act there's a little bit too much cross cutting of like oh my god yes room situations <laughs> and then we go to the um covert op and then it's like uh, almost there it seems like there's like 30 establishing shots of like somebody hiding behind a bush yeah. or something like that and i'm just like your cross cutting is killing me right now but uh was- i i'm just thinking just of other moments in the movie that i feel like not are the first but i'm like i think just in my memory okay i was a, i was in high school when this movie came out mm-hmm. and then i'm like i think that's the first time again like it looks so aged in through our 2022 lens but just the basically the instant messaging war between yeah. uh Ritter and then yeah. Ryan on their, on their computers on their giant like you know 586 PC uh and it was bothering me so much that like he was reading the documents and not just hitting print screen and then right. like reading the, I'm just, <laughs> just like, read it later like Duh. just read it later just read it later hit print screen let's go yeah <laughs> I saw this movie in cool circumstances. It was the first movie I ever saw at a drive-in. Oh, a, this is a great one then. Yeah. yeah, it was at the Twin Drive-In, which is cl- which closed, I think, like a month after I saw my first movie there, which was pretty disappointing. Um, so it's your fault that it closed. Yeah, so I got totally teased on the drive-in experience. Um, it was on a double bill with The Mask. And on the other screen was Natural Born Killers and the Crow. And I remember very distinctly 
being in the backseat of my parents' car and turning so I could watch Natural Born Killers and the Crow without sound because I thought Clear and Present Danger was boring. And I had seen The Mask three times already. So I want to point out that this movie has the return of the Harrison Ford finger point. Oh, for sure. Uh, I sent Mark this picture and Rob, I'll send it to you, but there's my favorite extra of all time in Clear and Present Danger, which is during the um, kind of the centerpiece sequence where they're blockaded in an alley and like the rocket launchers are getting shot at the caravan of, of government vehicles. There's, um, I think it's the guy who's supposed to be like the consulate ambassador or something yeah. like that that they're meeting up with and he has this look of sheer I know exactly panic. what you're talking about. He has this look of sheer panic on his face that looks so bad for like an acting choice. Yes. That, like I'm stuck the, the the sequence must have been so complicated where they're just like we can't go back and like just do this but I'm amazed they left this insert insert shot in because it looks like the pictures you would take when you're on like a roller coaster and you get off the ride and you're looking to see how freaked out you are with your friends. My also other, one of my favorite Harrison Ford moments just in all of Harrison Ford's filmography is actually in that sequence. It's the one where, he, and I think this was in all of the trailers or the teasers as well. Cause I just remember like every time like this movie's on TNT or something of like, this is like the little insert shot that they show. It's the one where like he's running from the SUV toward the camera and then the, and then the SUV blows up behind him and he like stumbles forward. That one, you guys remember the shot I'm talking about? Yeah. And it's just the, and every, and I have probably seen him do that stumble like 27,000 times in my life. And I'm like, and now it's to the point where like I am examining, I'm like, is that like the way that someone would actually fall if a bomb, right? It's just it's such an awkward looking fall. Uh, this movie has a lot of like little things in it that I enjoy. I enjoy um, the cartel kingpin with his baseball bat. <laughs> I knew you were going to say this. <laughs> with his aluminum baseball bat. And I just like, like, I would, I would never want to work for like, a cartel but i think that if like you had meetings in the batting cages that would be kind of fun that would be a plus that would definitely be a plus yeah yeah you never you don't see a lot of drug cartel meetings in batting cages and you really no. see a lot more of them so that that was cool and then i also like um sometimes i'll watch like movies and i'm just like this movie's secretly hot like this this like this could be like a secret skin a secret skinamax movie mm -hmm. and um the whole thing where like the kind of bookish like secretary oh right having the fling right. with latin jack ryan latin jack ryan yeah i'm just like i want to see that dirty movie I, I i don't know i think like this is my third favorite of the three that we've covered so far but okay. i do i do enjoy the movie but it's such a different vibe i think than the other two because the other two like this has its share of suspenseful moments but i think this is more of like a leisurely political like yeah kind of you know i don't know what to how even to describe it but it just sort of like unspools on a kind of more deliberate basis whereas hunt for red october it's just like it really ratchets up the tension and then like patriot games is like balls to the wall like the entire way through so i do I, one thing i love about this series as we're going through it is like how malleable you can make these movies with the central character because you got a submarine thriller you've got a uh, revenge movie and then you've got um just a political thriller more or less so yeah this one is like totally watch over in a four-hour block on tmc in the yeah area. this has like a and e amc it's like built it's like usa like you could air it on any of these networks it's yeah. like made for cable yeah. theatrical movie <laughs> And I mean, a truly great Harrison Ford closing scene with the with the doofus press. Oh my god! Like, so great. and you can how feel dare it. you, sir? You can yeah. feel it as he's standing there. It's like I'm upset. And he's like, and the president's like, well, you know, Potomac, the Potomac two steps on. You got a bubble. He's just like, just does his Harrison Ford. Just like, and they, and this is the stuff that like we talk about, like actors going to their ticks or going to their like repertoire or whatever, like doing the same thing over and over again. But this is like, like he knows this is money in the bank when he does yeah. it. He's like, just put the camera right here and let me do this. And he knows exactly what to do. He just looks at the president. It's like, I don't dance, sir. You know, it's just like, and it's just like, yes, yeah. yes. Like yeah. this is what we want, you know? I think if you were to make 
like let's say you were to remake this not that anybody needs to remake this but if anybody wanted to go back to those old clancy books and like oh let's just make one that hasn't been made yet or something um i think what's cool is you could just take the same story and you could re like reshape the focus of it right mm -hmm. so like this clear and present right for clear and present danger you could just have focused on like the political part of it and i still think it's like a I still think it's a fun movie, right? You could still yeah. just focus on the drug trade part. And I think that's still interesting too. You could, we could make Adam's um, Skinamax movie and like that would also like yeah. have its own appeal to We could it, focus you know? on James Earl Jones reading magazines in the hospital. Right. Mm -hmm. And flirting with the nurses. My yeah. guy, what are we doing? What are the sort of Jack Ryan traits that we see consistent and that you kind of need to have? I mean, I guess the number one thing is just sort of just his moral sort of fortitude, you know, that he's a he's a Boy Scout, basically. I, I appreciate that he's often out of his depth. And like, that's something that I like because it it's rare that an intelligent character in movies is also clearly like, kind of in the center of a maelstrom most of the right. time it's like usually they're kind of the ones with the upper hand or they're you know the ones pulling the strings and things like that and I think the thing with, that's interesting with him is like yeah he's like in Hunt for Red October and then especially in Clear and Present Danger like he's very intelligent but he just is a pawn like in right. certain like ways that um is being used by his higher ups and like higher powers and everything like that I think to go along with what Adam's saying is part of the reason why he's like the fish out of water is that uh, he's an apolitical figure. You know, he's yeah. not right. He's not like he's never depicted as like Republican or Democrat or Libertarian or whatever. He's just he's just a guy that does his job, you know, and I don't care about all this political BS. Right. That's the end of this movie. Right. Um, I just got to get the job done and what the yeah. right thing to do is oh, the right yeah, thing to do. President. So next week, we'll be back with The Sum of All Fears. My boy Affleck is going to join the party. Mark will be back. Sounds great. Then until that time. May the force be with you. <laughs> it is. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry.